Rick, in case there are people who've bought this and they've not really heard Carl before, um, remember we were talking a while back about the uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actors Studio. Oh, yeah. Where the host, James Lipton, always asks a the same questions to every guest. And it's just supposed to sort of, you know, get their creative, you know, juices flowing, their mind working. We we did ask Carl some of them. We we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's carry on fire with that, a then. few more at him. And that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. Question six. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um, there isn't really one that, that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get, like, I like going in the park, right, and you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get, like, yeah. bird noises and stuff. Give me your fucking wallet! But then, like... Things like, nice yeah. noises like that, and then, uh, uh, but, but, but... You, 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 you fucking, you cunt! Why did you fucking sleep with her? It's lovely in the park, isn't it? But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Because I was in there the other day, and, uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought, that's odd, that's out early, right? Because it's like, sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it. And then it got, like, a little worm, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> <And> <laughs> Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? Had... Why were you interfering? In nature. With a, with a robin? Taking a worm, just because it, it it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought, wor w you see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down. It's miserable. They come to the top of the soil, then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable, but it was a sunny day. Unless they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they they hear the water or something falling on the ground, and they go, "What's going on?" And they come up to see what's happening. <laughs> No way, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? Because they're, they're hearing, like, knocking on their, their land, and they're going, who's that? And they come <laughs> up. <laughs> Sorry, wait. wait a minute. But why do you think they come up when it's raining? Because they're hearing the, the, the noise of the Yes, rain. but they know what it is. What am I doing? Why am I talking like him? Of course they don't know what it is. I, look. Can worms the, hear stuff? Yeah. Well, they, they got- <laughs> <laughs> You don't know anything, Carl! But they, I, so, I assume they can sense vibrations and yes. so on, but they can't yes. hear in the way we hear. No, of they course don't they ears, can't. Do they? Of course they can't. Well, whatever, right? So, all I'm saying is that- But what was this thing about these worms? They hear the tapping and go, oh, what's that? <laughs> right, tell us- okay, st so start, you're a worm, okay? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of- you're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So, and you, you, you hear eyes. about this, don't you? You hear about blind people have got really good ears. And it's no. the same with a work. No, they do. It's an extra sense. They no, say. it's not. It's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. They start getting used to to uh, relying on them more, but it doesn't. So you don't turn into a uh, bionic woman because you lose your eyes. No, but you do because you use them more. If you use something a lot, you get better at it. So their ears are good. So all I'm saying is, so this rain's coming down. I don't know who to believe here, Rick. The the rain's coming down on the land. The worm goes, "What's going on?" <laughs> What's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's that's what I'm saying about. What the do you mean? What do you? What is? Sorry. What is this world where he goes? Oh, it's just rain again. Oh, so that's that's the four hundredth time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically. Uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and, and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. But you it's, don't know that. It's the same way you're saying to me. I don't know what a worm's thinking. You don't know what it's thinking. I know it's not thinking. You don't know that though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it? it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What <laughs> about this one then? What about um? What about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All open. Right. Well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> I was. Do you know how I've been to my mum and dad's? Right. I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. All right. And she was saying how, um, this flower, uh, solved a crime. What happened was, there was a murder, yeah. right, in an office. 
So they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So they said that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. Mm. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on special the flower. Special wires, yeah. On the flower, and it's sort of shaking and stuff, because I even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the plant back on the shelf, yep. we'll water it, we'll calm it down, <laughs> then get- <laughs> Give it a nice cup of tea. <laughs> then get every Think member of staff- Right. To right. come in the room- Yeah. And just- Go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them. So like a lineup for the flower. Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a lineup. Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say, stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of stuff. It was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were going, this isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The, pla the plant gives them a. Some, some caretaker fella. Uh, um, caretaker, yeah. Said, go over there. Was it? You was know, it an so old man that, I mean, cause Scooby Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, uh, is that, that, why is that janitor so evil? The, they send the caretaker over to the plant, he's going, you know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Mm -hmm. Plant starts shaking, what have you. They did him. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? <laughs> Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things though, imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you're thinking I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up, you weren't expecting that. So suddenly <laughs> you're off guard. And you go, you go, okay, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. You're talking absolute bollocks, that was one of the most <laughs> nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. listen, well it happened, but- It didn't happen. Said it. But what I was saying is about the worm, right, the worm- that I saw, and like I say, it was a sunny day, I thought, you know, what's that doing up here and what have you. So anyway, so this robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it and I thought it said sunny day and that, give the worm a break sort of thing. So I went, oh yeah, yeah, like that, and it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it was a sunny day and everything, normally birds are nice noises that I like, and yet there it is going about wrecking lives. What <laughs> <is> it? <laughs> wrecking lives! It was a no, worm! It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly in that, and I thought, that's life, innit? That's, that's what life is like. One minute it's there, then it's, then it's not. I just thought, there's the worm, it, it came out, it was happy, didn't know what was going on, and the, it had an extra chance, the, the robin dropped it. And then he got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. You People... put it off, but then it won. But... That's, that's the terrible <laughs> thing, isn't it? The worm was going, oh God, Carl Pilkington. So that's, that's who's been sent to save me, is it God? You've sent Carl Pilkington, oh, I'm dead. That's it, okay, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. Question seven. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a, as a worm. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, the, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, well, but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, <laughs> that go around that. So now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's, so like, it's like anything, isn't it? A every every noise can mean a disaster <laughs> somewhere. Can it? Why? Why? Think of some other noises you like. Okay, what's a, a, a lovely noise? No, hang on. Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause? Why would that also signify disaster? Um. Asylums. Yeah. That's depressing, isn't it? They're always laughing in asylums. But it's a scary laugh, isn't it? What? It's like, oh. If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. <laughs> a baby laughing! No, if I had a, ba if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something. <laughs> yeah! And I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep. Yeah. 
and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> How is this that? I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky going, <laughs> Well, no, the- <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary. <laughs> Thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh God, a baby laughing. Oh God. Come on, no, no, I'm not getting off this subject, right. So what other sounds, right? What other sounds, right? right more, more you like. Um, well, come on, there must be sounds you like. No, the sounds, the sounds he hates are even more fascinating. <laughs> Oh, this terrifying, God. haunting oh. baby laugh. I don't think you can pick any sound and say, I like that. I, do, I, I imagine we don't like, um, the sound of a tiger. Uh, uh, evolutionary speaking, that's probably not a good sound to hear. But there are obviously some calming noises because, you know, when your mother sings you a nursery rhyme or something when you're a kid, you your know, mother's voice. Calming. Of course, your mother's voice. That That's probably pre programmed for you to, to like it. Yeah. So it, there's a time and a place. A lion's roar, or whatever you just mentioned, a tiger growling. It's all right. If if you're in a zoo, you go, oh, look at that. <laughs> so there's a time and a place for everything, isn't there? Yeah. I don't know what that point is. I don't know no, how no, that relates. Because, I mean, I, I live in London. If I woke up and heard the sea, I'd be worried. <laughs> I'd be, what's, what's going on? <laughs> you're like the worm who hears the rain. Question eight. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? This is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for f- Oh! No, well, I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having a go at an operation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it leaps from where- it leaps from no ambition, where if he could have a job, it would- uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round, and if he could have a job, he'd like go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog, to I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying, I bet it's a, like, we do this, and, you know, some people like listening to it and what have you, and you go, fair enough, but I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But, if you're going into, uh, uh like, an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space, do you know what I mean, when you're in waiting rooms and that- I'd, like, I'd hate to have my office in, uh, you know, A&E. Yeah, that's what I mean, there's loads of ill people coming in, they're normally upset, do you know what I mean? It's depre- even if the sun's out, it's a depressing building, isn't it? There's so people not- handcuffed to policemen. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say- You've done it. I've done that. So, uh, uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's gonna let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um Jim will fix it? No, I'm just saying the Comic way- Comic relief. But the way the world is, and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed. I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get- they get sort of, uh, what's the word? Sort of uppered. Too early. Uppered. <laughs> <laughs> uppered! Uppered! I love the fact- it's basic language. It's like- it, I, I, it's unbelievable. It's like there are only sort of like 50 words in the English language, so he has to like, you know, change them and customise them. Uppered. Do you know he, what I mean? They, promoted. Yeah, promoted. Yeah. They get- they get promoted I prefer uppered. Uppered's great. So- Why so, was I not uppered? Unbelievable. So do you know what I mean? I think because- because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors. Yeah. You get a job in a doctor's, you're gonna be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. But uh, what I'd do is I'd- I'd- I'd probably upper you, and then- um, what's the word? You go away them, you- I think it is, you go away them. You 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 leave the door, you. You leave the door, you- fire them. That's it, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'd- I'd up at you and go away the doctor, if anything. Uh, but I've been to, uh, you know how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff? Yeah. Because right? um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before- I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, we can't be having you coming here, right? But I said, right, okay, fair enough, what, what is this health check? And they said, oh, you know, we just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information, you know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick. <laughs> or, and, and I said, what, what do you mean though, when you said health check, what do you do? And, uh, she said, oh, it's just, I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the blood pressure. Uh, your eye, your eye, your weight, uh, 
Okay. That's about it. So I went went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right? Like a donor. Mm. And it had like, um, uh, it's basically everything you've got in you. It was all your main bits. Your liver, your heart, your kidney, uh, and what have you. And I thought, I was, I really thought about it for 40 minutes or so. I didn't just rush into it. I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff. But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was, it was, I think it was fourth on the list. Right. So they just sort of crammed it in. I think they know everybody's a bit cautious about giving no, their eyes no, away. No, no one cares more about the eyes than the liver or the... Mm. the why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of, you know, we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo-poo it, but the afterlife thing. Right, they're, 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 yeah, but yeah. you don't you don't know for sure if. Well, if... Wh why why would there be? How would there be? How would it work? Why why do you think there's an afterlife? Why do you think there's why? Uh, uh, because we're here already. It, it blows my mind that we're wandering about this planet anyway. Do you know what I mean? The fact that we're here just by gravity blows your mind, Carl. No, but do you know what I mean? The the fact of your mum and dad have it away, and then you just pop out, and it's like, how's that happened? And then it's <laughs> well, the what fact happens that is the father <laughs> inserts his. No, but but what I mean is. You know, not just that bit. The, the, how I've said before about my heart just sort of pumping away on its own. No one's keeping an eye on it. It's not plugged into anything. No. And yet, I want to move my hand like that, and it does it. Yeah. That blows me away, right? Yeah. You, I mean, you're still so, worried about whether you control your brain or the brain controls you. So what I'm saying is, how do you know what goes on after life? Because, do you know what I mean? If so what? So what? So why in an afterlife do do would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart. Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, it's amazing! So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because I you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, say like how they've seen ghosts in, um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, uh, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out- But Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's- it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it? is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in- oh, What oh, makes these rolls? The, the way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about 1830, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your but ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, uh, uh, you might have both been suddenly. Um, killed in a- in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. A meteorite hit you or the- Well that's- know. that's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You start going, oh. And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to- to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going- are you go- so I- so I get the vicar round, um, 
Okay, right. This See, is... I don't want to get caught with my with someone <laughs> with their finger up my ass when the vicar's come round. The last thing I want to get, uh, catch me is the vicar coming oh, in with I've got a, a yeah. doctor's finger up my ass. I usually hide in the wardrobe when yeah, that happens. Whenever that happens. So oh, listen. So it. no, wait, 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 wait. So so you're you're haunting, right? It's years later. It's a hundred years later. You're 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 you're, you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's it's twenty seventy three and they, they go, vicar. Vicar. They go, Vicar, there's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little, it's like a chimpanzee but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be, are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well as you? Both, both, yeah, you both yeah, die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers round your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Here's, what here's a load of bollocks this, <laughs> this is. This is extraordinary, No, but listen, <laughs> listen, listen to this. Listen to this. This right. is a good one. Oh, this like will convince us this one. Yeah, this way, okay. Answer this. This will be proof. Go on. I watched the programme the other week about, mm. um, dead people. Of course you did. Right? And it was, it was people who had been found in their house, you know, they haven't got any family. Yeah. Um, they died, sat in their armchair. Nobody's knocking on the door, ringing them and checking if they're all right. Yeah. Right? So they die. Yeah. And they rot away in a chair. No. Oh. People, you know, the next door neighbour called up called up whoever you call up for dead people and go, there's a dead body next door, it's stinking, can you come and get rid of it, right? Mm. They go in and- I forget what service that is. <laughs> I don't know where you find that <laughs> in the yellow pages. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good business though, yeah. isn't it? Hello, corpse <laughs> removal. <laughs> Stinky dead people. So they go in, there's flies everywhere. Of course there is, yeah. The doors and the windows are shut. Where are them flies from? What so do you mean? Do you know that thing, reincarnation? Yeah. I think there it is, there's an example of it, how there was no flies in there, a body rots yeah. away, out of the body comes flies, so you live yes. on. Or, out of the body comes flies from the maggots that were in the body. Well, okay, maggot then. So we've, we've gone on, we've lived on. What, what do you mean? The, the, I'm just the saying fly no, isn't a on. reincarnation of the maggot, the maggot is the larval stage of the fly. No, but I'm, forget all the maggot fly. Right. Think about going from man to a fly. What are you talking about? I'm saying the windows and the doors on this house were shut. Yeah. Shut tight. Now no, your no question flies is- had got in. They hadn't got in. They had got in. They hadn't. They'd, They'd already there. We're surrounded by them. We've probably got fly eggs on us now. Well, all, all I'm saying is, it's weird that them flies were in there when they weren't in there. I don't think this fella would have had loads of fly eggs on him. But I just think it's a bit odd. Why? What do you mean? I just <laughs> think it, there was loads of them. You didn't see it. But it only takes one fly to lay loads of eggs. Yeah, but... So you think it's wiser to ignore Ricky's answer and go with your ghostly supernatural reincarnation one? You think that's the- that's the wise, sensible way to go? I just this? think it's a bit odd how every time someone's got fly eggs on them. So- so- everybody... so that, to you, is, uh, uh, less of a chance of happening than when you die, some of you turns into flies. Fly parts. Well, that happened when my dad chucked a turkey away in a bin. And it was only in there for about a day. I went to go and put, like, a crisp packet in the bin at the end of the garden. And yeah. You, picked the lid off, full of flies. Yeah. Now, the the bid lin, the lid bin, the bin lid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a constant fight with his own brain. Was, was fairly sealed and what have you. Yeah. Again, it's, it's a turkey living on. No, it's not. We're it's the fact the that while it was out on the table- It hadn't been out on the table. We didn't eat in the end because it had feathers on it and my mum said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, but the- What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it had feathers on it? My dad got it off a mate and said, yeah, I've got this for Christmas, but it was yeah. still- it was still virtually alive. And my mum <laughs> said, oh, I'll just get one from the supermarket. So we put it in the bin. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm saying is- I'm telling you, the, the eggs were already on it, mate. It's just an idea I've had. It's a theory. Everyone's allowed one. But it's bollocks. Mm. Back to the Inside the Actors Studio questions. Question nine. What profession, Carl, would you not like to do? Um. You see, in a way, some bad jobs are good jobs in a way. Because, one, it means that when you have holiday, you really appreciate it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you see, I always thought, like, when, um, when I had a job where I, I used to have to do, like, four hours a night when I worked through the night, I only had four hours to do from two in the morning till six, right? 
but it meant that when I was on holiday, I never really appreciated it because between two and six, I'd be asleep anyway. So unless I got up at two in the morning and went, ah, I'm relaxing now, instead of working, you don't get the full- I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. The rules that you live by about uh, what you can enjoy no, and what you can't. What's good with a holiday, right? If you work, say if you work in a factory from eight in the morning till eight at night, yeah. packing socks into a, a rubber bag, right? Between eight and- what time did I say me? Eight. Shift <laughs> eight, eight. It's a twelve <laughs> hour- it's a twelve <laughs> hour sock packing job. <laughs> it is murder. <laughs> I am so like, it socks into a rubber bag. <laughs> yeah. I love to get my socks in a rubber bag. <laughs> and, uh, and also, he forgot, he forgot the timings immediately. He said the sentence, then it went out of his head. It's like, it's like, if you're packing, you from, uh, what time did I say it was? What are they packing? So, alright, so you're a sock stuffer, you do a 12 hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, go on. So, you go, oh, come on, Rita, no more socks for me. I don't want to see another sock for a week. Have you got the rubber bag? Don't bring the rubber bag. That's the last thing I want to see. So what I mean is, when you're on the beach, right, by the sea, mm. between eight and eight, you're thinking, oh, this time yesterday I was packing socks in a rubber bag. And you can really enjoy it. You can keep going, Oh, uh, an hour late you can go, oh, I was packing yeah. socks yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can I'm keep glad you joined, love. Will you stop going about the fucking socks? <laughs> We're on holiday. <laughs> I don't think this marriage is gonna last. <laughs> oh, look, Rita, I was- I know, you were packing fucking socks yesterday. <laughs> Let's not fucking talk about it for a week, you boring bastard. <laughs> oh, Rita, <laughs> what? This time is- I know, you were packing fucking socks in a rubber cunting bag. No, I was having lunch at this time, you fucking slut. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty! <sighs> so what I was saying is, I was- when I was working from two in the morning till six- Six. To really enjoy, enjoy being off, off from there, if I was on holiday- You'd have to get up in the middle of the night- To go, oh, this time yesterday this is the time I was it's playing- late. Surely the joy is not having to get up in the middle of the night. Then when you get up and thought, God, thank God I didn't have to get up in the middle of the night like I usually do, I slept through like a normal person. Surely that's no, the joy. I think the joy is going- Oh, I'm normally doing this at this time. But that's ridiculous because if you worked right till six a.m., you presumably went to bed and slept in till sort of three in the afternoon or something, yeah. Uh, so depends. you'd be up at ten a.m. going, "Wow, usually I'm asleep." So you get it then. So you're talking shit again. And the final question from the inside the actor's studio questionnaire: If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh. No, what do you I'm, mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know, uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates. I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns a place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. Okay, well, let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through to God, you go through to God, go through a few doors, go up, up, up the, the, the top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, okay, that overlooks the universe. And God okay. says, why have you got a doctor with his finger up your arse? <laughs> <laughs> and you go, well, you should know, you <laughs> caused it. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? He might offer you great wisdom, he might ask you a question, he might tell you something. What would you like him to say? Um, and is this just one, one visit? This is like, because it's my first day. Yeah, it's I your get first a chat day, with yeah. him. You get a chat with him, yeah. But after that, I don't. Well, I've you might bump into him at the, 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 you know, the, the Christmas uh, the, party, the AGM. But I'm not yeah. going to be myself, am I? I'm going to be in shock a little bit, because it's like, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable on the first day of holiday. Because you're in different surroundings, the hotel, you've got to get used to where everything is. Yeah. So he's okay. not going to get the best out of me. Well, to be no, honest. but you have eternal bliss. Yeah, you've got, you yeah, you got, he's got a long time to get to know you. And he knows everything anyway, so don't worry about it. So what, why is he seeing me then? What's the f what would you want God to say to you? So you walk in there, you're, you're happy with it because you understand now you're dead and well, it's a whole new world and everything's all right, you feel great. Like, what am I saying? Well, anyway. I'm going along with this dribble. Yes. What would you like God to say to you? Um. All right. Probably just just say, oh, um, uh, you've done well on that in your life. Um, 
you never did anybody any harm. Um, so, welcome to the, to Evan. Um, any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like- <laughs> I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So hang on, he's giving you a little map. So he's giving you a little map of the a area. Map, it's and big. he'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit, sort of, you know, a little bit- a bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> No, but oh, the, because the thing is, if you've done amazing. all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. So who's the worst person? You go to heaven and it's all great, and God goes, "Oh, look, and here's so and so," and you go, "Oh, for f I don't know, what's he doing here?" Yeah. Um. But why? Why would he be introducing me to that one? Ugh. No, I'm saying who's the worst person you'd like to. See, and you, I go, do you just not want to encounter in heaven? Um. What if what if he said, right, Carl, you're in heaven, but uh, we've got to teach you a lesson. You're a bit cruel to freaks. Here's Pillow Man. Here's the three-legged juggler. Here's the Elephant Man. They got a few questions. Yeah, that, that'd be all right. That'd elephant be Man goes, Why did you talk about me like that? I'd say I never had a go at you. <laughs> Why did you talk about me eating buns? <laughs> but then, I'd, I'd get a bit annoyed with God. I'd, I'd turn Elephant Man onto God. I'd say, well, hang on a minute. At least when he put his head down on that pillar and he did himself in, he did that because he was sick of life. You've brought him up here, he's still got the head. Why didn't you give him a, a better head whilst he was up here in his next life? Well, he could say the same to you. Heaven's beginning to sound like one of the worst <laughs> drinks do's ever. It's awful. Everyone's sort of making kind of snipey comments and you're having to make conversations with people you don't really want to talk to. Yeah, it is God, I'm not sure God's the best host. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um, uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea God's bored. Yeah. Is it a lot to keep him going? <laughs> oh, God. Playing solitaire on the computer. I don't know, yeah. But there's, I think there'll be a, just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's gonna be <coughs> well busier than that. <laughs> and what are you? So you all, you presumably you're all naked. Why has that happened? Well, because he didn't, he didn't want Adam and Eve to put clothes on, did he? He was annoyed at the snake and everything. And he, so you're all back to nature. You're all naked. So you're all walking around naked, right? Yeah. But so you, so you're up there. You, you, you know, you, 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 you're up there just naked talking to. Um, Graham Norton and, and stuff like that. But I'd have to get used to that. If I go up there and he goes, right, you're welcome to heaven and that, and I go, all oh, right, I've made it to heaven. He goes, yeah, yeah. right, uh, put your clothes in the bin bag. No, no, you, you, you're up there, you're already naked. Right, you, you I'd just... go, well, I'd say, so this is a bit odd. Why? Uh, you wouldn't worry about it there, would you? Yeah, but it's just odd, isn't it? It's something different, and uh, something different, you know. Well, no, you've been eyes. naked before. You've been naked before. Yeah, but I don't roam about with people around me. They're naked. not people. You'd have to get used to that. They're, heaven they're heavenly creatures. They're, no, but I'd have to get, I'd say, look, can you just leave me for like four days just to get used to this idea? Four days, okay. Four days, just just to get used to wandering about, and I'd be in my house, and I'd what house? look out. The house that I'm living in. Well, you don't live in a house in heaven. You just wander around you? on clouds, don't you? All naked and just. Oh, I, I, it's getting worse. I don't think it's that good. <laughs> it's not fair though, because all them lot have been up there ages with like a chance to get a bit of sun on the body and that, so they'll look alright. I'll be wondering about with like underpant marks and stuff. <laughs> underpant marks! <laughs>
Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's Diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a really dark <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Sure they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked and completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, they well, have. No, but fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's gonna keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean, just to get the- if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget, that's the saying. Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor, you're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But it's, it's right opposite. I'm surely not gonna go in my socks though, am I? But I don't wanna put on the shoes, it's mad. No, 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 no. Pop some slippers on. Well, perfect, yeah. Yeah. But you shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Cause they're inside shoes. You don't go roaming about on tarmac in slippers, that's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street, you know. I put you? my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the, uh, the, the paper and, you know, the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without, without any harm done? No. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. <laughs> Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> When he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a he tried to have a shower but there's no water. How long did it take you <laughs> before you realised he was there for twenty minutes? Yeah, after twenty minutes he said, Suzanne, should I be dry? Oh, yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right. There's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, innit? In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brushed my teeth just using the paste, and used the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. Uh, she said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> Oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much is any little drop in there? No, it's a big kettle. So what, did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, were you couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that shot of water aren't wasting it saying, oh, the feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the, uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that, they found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were twenty years ago. So, it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people keep people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's all rubbish. So, so they're always pushing it. It's, it's also pushed. measured against sea level. It's not measured about when you get otherwise they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the the no, peak is measured at, at against the end of the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, <laughs> he's not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so it, don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there and someone got near the top and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, I had to go back. No, the, the hand hit the bit of rock and it went like, ding. I'm like, what's that? Went, ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. 
they don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. <laughs> Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, <laughs> right. Off average. Okay. There's the council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're mm -hmm. not gonna sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, innit? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you where. Yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's a piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged a, oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah, but thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't you know bloody tipping or aliens or anything. My dad used to bury things in the garden because the council used to charge for like washing machines and and mangles and and cookers uh, and pets so i'm just thinking in millions of years when they dig that up they think that dogs used to cook and <laughs> yeah, like do yeah. washing up and things yeah i love the idea of burying utensils i think of the hole big enough to to bury a washing machine or a mangle so whoever kind of bought that house after your your yeah, dad I don't know. they got a little treating store yeah lovely little um themed rockery <laughs> yeah the weather is weird this morning. One minute it's sunny, then it's thundering, then hailstones, then it's sunny again. People will be saying it's global warming. I don't really know what that means. Everything's changing all the time, innit? I wonder if years ago when we first came out of the sea and we walked on land upright, did people blame the weather for that? Good point, aren't it? No, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. We didn't come out of the sea and instantly start walking around like humans and go, oh, can you believe it? We were swimming around, we were having a whale of a time. Do you know what? I blame the weather. No, but- now they would, if that happened. It's the same way, say like, um, evolution, right? We talk about it a lot, mm. right? Now, years ago, I don't know how it happened, but some whale had legs, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is how it started. Before he was a whale, yeah. Whales started off with legs, they that's right. They were rolling right. about on, on the beach front, right? Anyway, it worked out that, you know, they didn't like it or whatever, get back in. Now, say, if that happened again now, Right? Say if someone's born and they say, they always say don't they check for lumps and stuff. Right? Make sure you haven't got any lumps. Now say what, if I, Sorry, sorry, who says this and what, what, what's the, what? Like, magazines and doctors and that what, always say what, what, When you're first born? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but Ar all- Arbitrary decision, yeah, that answer. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> all, all I mean is, now, say if like our evolution thing is kind of like the next level is for us to have three legs because we're, we're that busy on the world now. But, but it doesn't work like that. Why would it work like that? Because that's nature, innit? It deals with it. If people are getting stressed out and getting achy legs a lot because they're going, well, what you're doing there is you're using two legs like you've got three. You need another one. But the problem is, no. Say Let if, finish. Say if someone grew a leg now because it's like, well, we need three legs. Yeah, but the, the let him finish. Okay. People would go, oh, I found a lump. Right, and the doctor will go, oh, and whip that out. Now that could be a third leg that's growing. But Carl, evolution doesn't work like that. It does Some, work Suddenly like that. something isn't born with a perfectly formed third leg that can be passed on. I know, it's a lump. It starts off like a lump and, and if you left it alone, yeah. it would eventually, over a bit of time- Uh, no, over many, many millions of years. Yeah, but, but it grows as another leg, but we're not letting that happen anymore. It also wouldn't happen. D d d limbs don't work like that either. They do if you keep putting extra pressure on two legs. Carl, you're- you're- honestly, what you imagine the process of evolution and natural selection to be is- I-, I it's beyond me, it's no, incredible. No, but it depends what sur- whatever your surroundings are, that's what you change to, isn't it? Like the- Well, the you don't- you, we don't change to it. You're either selected or you're not. So, uh, it, uh what happens is there's a genetic throw up, so something's born, uh, you know, a llama's born with a slightly longer neck. And if that gets, you know, the leaves that are slightly higher up and it survives, it lives longer, it passes on its genetic material. Um, uh, soon, if that works, now over millions and millions of years, uh, that they're the dominant species, a new species, uh, uh, um, is thrown up with a slightly longer neck, uh, uh, and so on and so on, and it's mm. gradual. It's just a slight no, advantage. No, sometimes it happens quicker than that. There's been animals that have had eyes and then they go, oh, they don't need them, they go in the space of a fortnight. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what no, what are you talking about? There's a lizard somewhere where it's roaming about in the dark and it used to have eyes and they used to be like, what, why have we got eyes and that? What's the point in having these? Because we're keeping them open. And they were getting more tired. 
Because at the end of the day, if your eyes are open, do you know what I mean? Blind people can stay up longer than a someone with eyes. <laughs> Keep going, I want to follow this through to its natural right. conclusion. Keep right. going, keep going. There is no- there is nothing to do. Right, uh, Right, the first signs of you getting tired, you go, oh, my eyes, I can hardly keep them open. Yeah. So a blind person doesn't get that, because they can roam about with them short like so that. So they never sleep, do they, so, blind people? Well, they sleep, but not- they don't need as much, because their eyes aren't stinging. All guessing, all guesswork, and all nonsense. I mean, all nonsense. Well, hang on, fair enough, okay, let's ex even if we accept that to be true of blind people, what- what was happening with the lizards? The lizards were going, I can't believe this is mad, we don't need our eyes, we're down underground, what's the point? Over. Jeff, Bill, let's just no longer use eyes. Well, they were just like, um, in a way, it's better if we keep our eyes shut to keep the soil out and stuff. Um, and then over time they were like, oh, my eyes are stuck. Like the time <laughs> when- Over uh, a fortnight, you said. No, 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 well, no, it's over hundreds of millions of years. And the other thing is, it's not the case that there's no will to evolution, what happened was that they- a, a- a blind one had no disadvantage, so he was selected, um, uh, uh, better than one with eyes that maybe would find it irritating or- or- or getting in the way. You know, just like, um, a, a snake, it's not a disadvantage for a snake to lose its legs, because it- it- it's selected and- and then it's an advantage, because they don't- they- they can get into places that they- you know, where legs would get in the way. Mike, I've said before, right, you see like a little fella, like a- a midget or a dwarf or something. Right. Who's to say that that isn't the way we should be? Do you mean, how do we know that- Well, everybody looks at them and goes, oh, look, little fella. But really- it doesn't matter. If- if we were all like that, the world would be a better place, because it's bigger, so there's more to see. Whereas for us, we're- we're getting bigger all- all the time, the world isn't growing, so there's less to see for us. So for a midget, the world is brilliant, so I'd say it'd be good if we do go backwards as opposed to forwards. Instead of us getting bigger all Steve, the time- Steve, a cup of tea? No, I'm not sure if mate, I'll leave you to it. Um, do you know what I mean though? Have we got- we haven't got any- We've only got instant coffee as well. No, yeah, I but, might pop out for something. But what I mean is, they always say well, like the, like it. the body's- No, no, thanks mate, but tell me when he's finished. I'm oh, just no, saying no, no. the body's getting bigger, and instead of going forward- No then, sugar for me, thanks. Oh. Do you want milk though? Yeah, yeah, milk. Forget it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you, you'll just choke to death. I think that's- that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And they'll be what- they'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they you like- did, I'll tell you what though, right, that I'm getting worried now because- the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean though? Like a proper paranoid sort of, it, one of those people that assume gonna live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and, uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way round the, you know, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's gonna have to polish each bean. That's what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, uh, think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a lunchbox with a chocolate bar, within an hour it was gone, right? And they say, now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. Did this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, is it Ted? <laughs> he went, what? <gasps> right. I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ, I came it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future you're running around and germs are- Eating chocolate. <laughs> 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 that's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Went to bed and chatted about food to Suzanne. I said it would be best if our bodies could be run on something like coal. That way you wouldn't get fat people because you wouldn't be eating for enjoyment, you'd just be eating to give you energy. Suzanne said, why do you always take the nice things out of life? 
Because sometimes to think about the future, you, you, it's not going to be all good, is it? Look at the way we have to do things now that we sort of go, oh, I'm sick of this. But they do it for your own good. But you try and oh. change the laws of the universe. Based on arbitrary whims. No, but yeah. we're always eating stuff. That's one of the things we do now, isn't it? As soon as we find a new creature, like that frog, that's been hidden away for, like, millions of years, you get someone who go, I wonder if we can eat that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's it, everything that's walking on the world, they sort of see what powers it's got. Uh, what but, powers but, it's got? No, like, if it can jump far, um, you know, is it poisonous? Can you get anything out of it to save people? And yeah. then, can we eat it? They're the three things that they do with a new frog. <laughs> Any creature. Is that what are they? Can it jump fast? Yeah. Is it poisonous? Is it poisonous? That it's... you can use to get rid of illnesses. Yeah. Can you eat it? Because That's the more first more three questions anyone asks, do it they? It seems to be the way, because you look at menus and that, how they're getting bigger and bigger now, and that's only because we're finding more and more species of stuff. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you look at some stuff on a menu, that, that octopus you eat. At some point, that would have gone through the list of, right, what does it do? What's it got in it? What does that ink do? What's it taste like? Can it jump? Can it, whatever, it, well, they've done tests on it, haven't they, when we said about it being in a, getting in a jam jar or something. Yeah. So it's all part of it. Everything's been tested. Everything. But I think, what the thing is that the first you hear of a newfangled food, do you think that, uh, in ancient civilization, they didn't, they didn't do this, they didn't, Try an oyster, or, or spear a fish, or yeah, because they, eat they a wasn't maggot. that much o other stuff knocking about at that time. Right, but we've got loads of stuff, so why are we messing about with some new frog? It's all like people just like showing off, don't they? Leave the frogs, let them get busy, and have loads of them. Eat the chickens. When we run out of them, move on to the frog, or whatever. But why, why have all this on the go? Do you know what I mean? It just makes it. I, I, I hate going out for a meal now because it's like, what, what are you having? Oh, I'm sick of it. Look at it all. <laughs> And then you're forced into people going, oh, have you had the new frog? <laughs> no, I don't want it, I'm happy with chicken. That's what I mean. I- yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you ever been out, Rick, and someone's been trying to force frog on you? Never, I've never been forced frog in my life. Although I did go for a meal once with Carl. We went there and, uh, he had the Oriental hors d'oeuvres, uh, I recommended, right? Um, and, uh, he was trying to get this little oyster, right, off the- Shall right, and he was going to get stuck to its house, right? And uh, I looked round, and his eyes were watering, and he was choking. And he was drinking water. I said, "What?" And he said, "I hate that." And it was a big blob of wasabi, Oof. right? And I said, "Why did you put it all in one?" He went, "It's just I thought it was a mushy pea." <laughs> Why would they put one mushy pea? Was it hardcore the wasabi? It felt like my head was caving in. <laughs> <laughs> that was just Ricky squeezing it, wasn't it? Between courses. So with that though is, uh, you know hot food, yeah. why well, you get addicted to really hot food, is the pain is actually your, it's killing taste buds. And then endorphins are releasing the brain like, you know, a morphine derivative to, to, uh, sort of go, it's alright, oh, calm the pain. So you actually get a addicted to that sort of, you know, what so happens. why, why would you want to kill your taste buds? But new ones come back? Well yeah, I think they, you, yeah, I think you'd... Straight away? Well I don't, I don't know how long it takes, I don't, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. No, it's just, is that the chef sort of going, oh, I'm serving some right rubbish tonight. Give him some of that kusabi. <laughs> kusabi! Oh, God, and Tonto! <laughs> oh, God! Back to the diary. At lunchtime, I went to a local cafe and had an omelette. An old woman, who was about 70-ish, was in there eating pizza. It didn't look right. No. I know what you mean there, actually. Old people eating pizza seems a bit weird. What about an old Italian lady eating pizza? Would that be right? Uh, no, I'd expect her to have lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried it could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just <laughs> thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. Uh, there's so many elements in this. There's a- there's a woman who can read 
She used to read that mind. again. Read that again. Okay, we're gonna have an instant uh, replay no, now. I'll tell any you what, psychologist I'll tell you what it is. listening or psychiatrist or just well anyone, listen to this. What Carl's put in his diary. Okay, Steve, away you go. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago. When I worked in a studio making cassettes, some mind reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, he, firstly, how did you know she was a mind reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people yeah and she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff so right. you get a, a recording, a recording of, the, of it uh, yeah. and she was just there and she was staring at me like that just looking over and a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes don't they no they do and why was it looking what worried you pick up vibes depends what you mean by pick up vibes Do dogs pick up loads of vibes and stuff i read the other day how they can tell if someone's got cancer and well that. they can they, well yeah that, so that, that's, the, it's, the, it's one there's a science body. behind that they they can smell the different uh, yeah. the, uh, at a cellular level yeah you so know, it's the same cause it's like thing. 70 times start, but no no they can't go the, the dog wouldn't even know you're an idiot the dog uh, the even dog was sort of looking weird and stuff it and knew she, it was, knew. she but, was looking at me. But were they looking- I'm not being funny, were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you no, think? No, they were just, uh, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on a beach. <laughs> he remembers what he was uh, thinking! No, just so <laughs> she thought, oh hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> So you thought she'd go, oh no, I'm, gonna, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. <laughs> but why were you worried that she was reading your mind? Because you weren't thinking of anything un, you know, no, unsafe. Hold on, don't, don't, oh please. No, 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 I'm just trying to get in his it, mind. It his it doesn't rationale. work, Carl. No, 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 no one, one can his, read your mind. No, but wait, wait, what I mean is, even if, you know, let's assume that you thought she could read your mind, why did you think that there was anything wrong with finding out what you were thinking? Because she knew- she'd have known that you knew that she could read minds, so she, if she read your mind and all you were thinking was she can read my mind, she'd think, what? Of you course, know, so if she mind. really could read your mind, she's yeah, going, there's Carl there trying to make me, uh, think that it's the dog, I know he's thinking of the dog. No, but when you sort of, uh, try and think of normal things, you think of mental things, don't you? So I was like- Whoa, hold on, let's let that go. Go on, go on. No, what I just mean, like, you're going, oh, God, I best not watch what I'm thinking then. What it were you thinking? Tell, what tell were you me thinking? some of the mental things No, there was loads of think. things that was in there. Like, Go there on. was an old woman who used to annoy me in there, who used to give me socks all the time. <laughs> and- Socks? Socks. She used oh, to always socks. make loads of socks and she'd be bringing them in. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I sort of said, like, I'm sick of your socks, she kept bringing them in all the time. And they had, like, pictures on and that. I didn't want socks with pictures on. So, um. So I used to, I might have been s sort of stood there going, oh, there she is with the socks, I'm sick of her. Now, if she can sense that, she'll go over to her and go, watch him, he stop bringing him socks, socks yeah. or whatever. No one can read minds, no one can contact the dead. Say like me, right, if I sometimes come in the, in the room and that and I'm fed up, you go, oh, Carl's fed up, I haven't even said anything. So it's because, just that, but that's because you look like a miserable bastard. Yeah, yeah and we can we know what that means. We're we're, we're human and we understand right. facial so movements. So it's a bit like moves. that. It's a bit like that. It's a level down from no, that. No, 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 no. She should be able to read your mind if you're locked in a safe and she doesn't know who you are and she doesn't know whether there's someone in there. No, that's what that, the double that, blind test that is. That would never work, would it? Because that means she'd never get a rest. That's like so You're Geller. making up the rules. You're making up the rules. Oh no, the thing is, that's what these people do go, oh no, I have to hold your hand. Oh, I have to, you have to write it down. Well, why? Why do you? It's the same as these mediums that contact the dead. They go, oh, I'm getting someone. Just ask him who he is. Just give us his full name and address. It's ridiculous. I love the fact that these, these dead people give him cryptic clues. Ask him about the, uh, toaster. What's your name? What's your name? Can't say my name. Might be an uncle. Just give me your fucking name. Back to Carl's diary, Friday the 31st. I read that some fella had been having an affair. His wife found out, so when he was asleep, she superglued his knob to his stomach, one of his bollocks to his leg, and glued his arse cheeks together, then chucked him out. If Suzanne did that, I would definitely not get back with her. Saying that, I would have woke up if someone was putting superglue on me arse. I'm quite a light sleeper. Is that what she did, is it? Yeah, that's why I'm a bit cautious about wearing earbuds every night. The, uh, 
plunge things. <laughs> Earbuds. Earbuds. Right. So, that's a, no, so that's not a cool, right? Plunge things. He's like, he wakes up words. They taught a chimp to talk, and the chimp had a better grasp of language after about a few years than Carl. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I won't wear buds and plunge things. <laughs> I phoned him up the other day, uh, uh, he went, he went, oh, just tried out those new earplugs that mould to your ear, you can't hear a thing, except your own voice. And I went, oh, right, they're good, aren't they? He went, yeah. He said, it's weird hearing your own voice, isn't it? Because you're hearing it as other people hear it. I went, no, you're not. He went, you are. He said, you don't usually hear your own voice, because usually when you talk, you're talking over it. <laughs> woke up at 9.55am. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about- <laughs> He just opened his eyes and looked at him. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so he's, he's, he, he opens his eyes, he looks at Suzanne, she looks at him. What question, Rick, do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on. What question do you oh, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up, I said to my girlfriend, did I tell you about- I woke up, I looked at Suzanne, she looked at me, I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> did I tell you about the immune system? Suzanne started laughing, I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God! I was thinking that! Springing into action, he zips up his eyes alone. <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, <laughs> shut up. Oh, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. I was talking to Suzanne about how it's odd that Sundays are meant to be the day of rest. I thought God was meant to be born on a Sunday. Or was it the seventh day that he finished making the world? <sighs> Imagine how good the world could have been if he'd given it an extra day. Sometimes <laughs> it's best to give yourself a deadline, though, so you don't faff about. <laughs> I looked at Suzanne. She was leaning back on the bench with her eyes shut with the sun on her face. I never got an answer to my question. Pretending to be, to be asleep. asleep. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, ah! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now what? then, would you walk, w how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I or, reckon I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like- <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! He solved it again! He's thought it through! <laughs> oh. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that, that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. The story used the description to describe it. There was a picture. I think it was a fairly decent description. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, d I Cockroach mean- Cockroach men, spider men, what are you talking about? I haven't Don't had a normal conversation with you for a year. <laughs> no. It's getting worse, I think. I think- I think it's cause you've left and you've got too much time in your hands and you live in your head for sort of like maybe eight hours a day and then you uh, offload when someone calls you or when you call me or- or Suzanne gets the- the brunt of it. But I mean, I- I- I mean, I, I don't know. I really would like to, and a, a nice, I just still think he's brilliant, right? But I would like to get a little psychiatrist in, just mm. to, would you mind seeing no, a psychiatrist? No, it's just, there's nothing wrong, these are all ideas, aren't they? You look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff- Powers? Going about. So these powers- But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or- or whatever that's- No, what you mean? said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the, use where's them. Where's the- you've left a big bit out, but when that one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket- It's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well. 
but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Cockroaches can live without a head. I know. For... Could they still sort out the rubbish if they've got no heads? They could, couldn't they? Uh, Except they, if they were- because you know you want to use them as builders and dustmen, they couldn't whistle at pretty girls, could no, they? No, but they wouldn't be doing that job, they're just doing the bins. Okay. It's Ant that's not doing the building. Okay, I'm sorry. And are they getting up early? Are they disturbing you? They don't you? sleep, do they? But then they get you up even earlier. You hate it when the builders get you up at seven, then go to the breakfast. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on as long, would it? Because the ants would be working hard. So it'd probably be one day of madness, but then it'd be finished. As opposed to builders just stood about whistling, doing nothing, going on for months. And is this ant six foot? Uh, no. No. About three. Three foot. So how many of them are there? About, uh, about thirty of them. And what do they look like? Are they just a giant ant with ant, a- Ant, on. Um, just get on with it. I mean, it'd be weird for a bit, but with anything you get- you get used to seeing but things, Carl, don't you? again. This isn't an idea, it isn't a theory, you can't- you can't put this into practice because it doesn't exist. I know, I'm just saying It's not- well, well, I mean, you wishing for ant builders is the same as you wishing that you didn't have to do any building and your house was just perfect, or you could just wish for it. What's the difference? Why go through this elaborate- <laughs> But th- th- what I'm saying weird, is that it? your wish is- it, 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 you're, you're taking- you're not taking shortcuts. You see, it's the same people who goes, oh, I wish I'd go back in time and put a thousand pounds on the Grand National. What you mean is you wish you had a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the time travel bit and put in a- do you wish you were rich? <laughs> yeah. It's like- so you wish you didn't have to have builders round. That's what you're wishing for. So this elaborate thing of getting a three foot ant with a hard hat- Today I got an innovations catalogue. I thought I'd keep it because I like the stuff they sell in it. Brackets, one big slipper. What's that, one big slipper? It's just if you don't go out much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't like slippers. No, I know, but th- th- I think they're a good good idea because they're just there to keep your feet warm. But why one big? Why not two sim- smaller ones? So you can walk around? Yeah, one big slipper's just making it painful It's more sort of roomy, isn't it? Why it's do you comfort. think that's a good invention, one big slipper? How is that better just than two smaller slippers? Because the problem is with slippers, right? You're, you've already said how you nip across the road in them, right? So you muck them up and you have to buy some more. There's no way you'll be nipping to the shops in that one big one. That will always stay where it should be, by the sofa next to the telly. And you go, right, I'm in for the night now, where's my slipper? <laughs> <laughs> but can I just put my feet inside a, a cushion cover or something? What? If you want. But it's, it's only cheap, why not get one? <laughs> You're right. They're, they're only cheap, why not get one? But then, Carl, why not get one big glove? If you're not going out, right, just get one big glove. You don't have to do anything, just one big glove. Pop your hands in one big glove. I'm not going out. Gloves, you have to go out and touch stuff. Just one big glove. Why, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, why bother putting trousers on? You've got to put, uh, legs in both. Why not just wear a skirt? Yeah. Well, well put, pop a skirt on, yeah. Just put on a lady's skirt or a lady's dress. It's one piece, isn't it, then? Yeah. Just pop around in there. One big monocle. Don't wear glasses. Wear one big monocle. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid having two gloves. Two gloves, two slippers. It's mental. Anyway, um, I had a good sleep last night. So much so that I woke up before my legs did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means! This has happened before when I was younger. We used to have a phone in the bathroom so that if anyone called and we were on the toilet, you'd still be able to be available. My bedroom was next to the bathroom and the phone rang one morning. My mum and dad were at work and my brother and sister were out somewhere and the phone woke me up. So I jumped out of bed to answer it but the bottom half of my body was still asleep and I fell to the floor. <laughs> it's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? I, well, hang on. I had to crawl for a bit and reached for the phone. It was a fella selling some bread to my dad for the shop. By the end of the call, my legs were working again. <laughs> but it's a weird sensation. What shop? My mum and dad used to have a butty shop. Somewhere. Do they? But the thing is, uh, just on the floor, top half, I had to sort of crawl, carry me weight, and my legs were just like they weren't there. It's really, really weird. You mean you woke up with two dead legs, two pins and needles, mm. knee legs? Are you sure you, were, you weren't wearing just one big slipper? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to, uh, the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And the shaven monkey with a head like a fucking orange, that is Carl Pilkington. Right. Well, um, this is a, 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 a special edition, a free, a giveaway podcast, um, uh, that the people who uh, came to see my show, Fame, in London, got, put on their seat, gratis, 
so thanks for coming well unless you didn't even come and still got this free unless someone went and said i don't want it he was rubbish and gave it to you you're listening to it for free. or you've sort of downloaded it illegally it was free anyway oh forget it um we've been away for a while now we're back together the old team the old team back together in a little room in central london carl what looking back on the year what's happened I remember last year the most memorable thing that happened was you saw a grub eating a biscuit. So, uh... That was a highlight. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I made it into his diary. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's the big thing of this year? What's the big thing so far of 2007 that, as, if I say 2007, you'll go, oh yeah, that was the year that... Uh... You know, in ten years' in time... Years to come, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, remember 2007, you go, of course I do, it was the year that... I haven't really been following what's going on because of other, other like, personal Well, yeah, issues. what's the big, okay, what's the it's big thing? my boiler, thing? my boiler's playing up still. I'm sick of it. Your what? <laughs> my boiler. Your boiler? The boiler that eats the water up and stuff. Such it doesn't. You know what I'd do in that situation? I'd instantly get a repairman out to sort Done it out. Done that. Done that twice. It was 80 quid for him just to say, uh, it looks like you need a new one. Why did you get a new one then? Call out. Because you, then you wondered, are you meant to believe him or is he out to sort of Well he's the expert. Morning. Yeah, but is he? It's well, like you meant to get a second opinion, aren't you like? So that was the first time then, so what was the second time? Who came out the second time? Same fella. And what did he say? Well, what I thought you were gonna me? get a second opinion. I yeah, know, and I also called up the company and, and they just sent him again because it Well call a different what company. Was the, what was it, no, what no. was his second opinion? <laughs> Eighty quid. <laughs> I undercharged you, it's 150. No, because they so they must look in the book and sort of go, oh, you know, Harry, Harry went round there or whatever, and, uh, and they must think, well, he went there last time, so he knows the situation. Yeah. And got the same fella again. Well, so look, well and got the same opinion, same, I assume. Same answer, yeah. Well, so, so, okay, so it's tw two, so twice you've got, called someone out, they said you need a new boiler. He had the overalls on, holding a monkey wrench again. He came in a van. Yeah. He charged you. He's the professional. Why haven't you got a new boiler? Because then he went to he went on to say that, you know, it's a dangerous setup I've got. Uh, it shouldn't be set up the way it is. It's dangerous. <laughs> Something about gas leaking out of it. Uh, he said, you don't, you don't sleep close to this, do you? <laughs> and it's like, well, the bedroom's there. It's not a big flight. You've seen it, Steve. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Every, everything's on sweet, isn't it? So, so like, so, so he, he, he went on to say, so everything's on sweet. Oh, so, uh, so anyway, so he, he's, he's just sort of said, look, you know, he, he doesn't want to touch it. He said, you need to get someone in who can sort this out for you. But what? And it took him two visits, 160 quid to figure that out. Yeah, this is what they do, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what's his advice? Um, he just said, you know, there there are people out there who will touch it. If you pay the right money. Well, okay, so you're going to get an expert in who does this thing and sorts it out, so... Well, no, I'd, I'd call up my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. He always knows He's someone who can sort, sort stuff out. And he said, uh, oh, one of your cousins is a, is a boiler man. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming round, but I've never met them. <laughs> and it turns out that that person, because, like, the whole family, you know, I, I'm not into sort of keeping in touch with people. Sure. I haven't spoke to my brother for, like, I don't know, 12 years and <laughs> sister about 15 years and that. So... The idea of this cousin, who have, I, I, I mean, I, he might as well not have said he's my cousin, because I'm not going <laughs> to know him anyway. I mean, it might have, that last fella, Harry, might as well have been related. <laughs> so, so they're going to turn up, and now it turns out that because they haven't seen the rest of the family, they're going to, like, use this as a reunion. Oh. What, so, so they're, they're all going to come round whilst... They're all coming round. Whilst he fixes the boiler. Yeah. And I ate it. I ate, I ate family things anyway. So they're going to come round and just look at you? Well... Yeah, apart from the one who's fixing it, he, he'll be fixing it and the others will just be sat around sort of going, so, how have you been? It's like, well, where do you start? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen, I, I mean, seriously, I mean, they are strangers. <laughs> when they buzz, I, I could be letting anyone in. <laughs> <laughs> when they buzz the door. And so, so you're going to entertain <laughs> them all in your, in your flat? Well, you I, I, I said to oh. me dad that I might just say that I've <sighs> got to go to a meeting, let them in, and then shoot off. I love that. So now, they're strangers that you're letting in your flat and you're not even being yeah. there. That's that's the best thing. That's that's the security. <laughs> now, Carl says he remember this year for uh, his boiler um, being a bit of a pain. But now everyone knows over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career. It's been get Carl famous. Yeah, I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, "You bald-headed mank twat." Make his luck. I, I well, want let me tell you now, Rick. Go I've on. been out and about, and a lot of people have said to me, they've come up to me and said, 
it has Carl Pilkinson got a head like a fucking orange? Well, I've and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. Well, I'm in uh, America quite a bit, and it doesn't matter what I'm talking to. David Bowie, The Simpsons, all these people, people on 24, all these people who have got these amazing careers and lives say, is Carl Pilkington really like that? I say, yes, he's, he's uh, not two short planks, he's three or four fucking short thick fucking plank. planks. Thick but short, short but yeah, thick Yeah, fucking planks. lumps of thickness. But he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate how, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, well, they're they're going to cover, yeah. yeah, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and, um, had a meeting, uh, in a cafe. And, uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And, uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? <laughs> thriller? Whatever. Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love yeah. that that he's playing it cool, like yeah, you've yeah. come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkerton, yeah, yeah, they, uh, they, they call me the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That was by Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just So a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when, if you just randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That, that to me is, stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? Does your brain rule you or do you rule your brain? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it. Right. It doesn't work the same. Just, just keep talking. Just keep, keep your mouth talking and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. So, uh, so, so anyway. Aristotle, he said, sit down, I've got an idea for you. Uh, Aristotle said, play it hard, what you go, right, just keep talking and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying, like, actors' names and that, who I thought should be in it, cos then that's giving, giving more, it's building. Right, okay, so, so who's you say? Who's you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing, uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Did they look at you like you're a fucking sorry. idiot? Well, I <laughs> so they they all started trying to figure out who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about. Wait, uh, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's like, Clive Warren, get me Clive <laughs> Warren on the phone. <laughs> get me Warren. Clive Warren. And I said uh, Rebecca De Mornay. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that go? She hasn't been in a uh, film for fifteen years. Is she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, they, love. they thought he was a genius. They thought he was an absolute. Like, like we've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> but wait on a minute, you could have. <laughs> You can have oh any God. film star, this is your fantasy <laughs> casting, <laughs> yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. <laughs> oh, God! Why didn't oh. you choose a, like, you know, a- Someone a who existed. Jayla or someone who's a oh. big star. Oh, God! Clive! <laughs> good morning! Clive Warren! <laughs> oh, God! Oh, So, God. anyway, so they're going, yeah, and what happens is, they're going out, and, uh, together and that. Yeah, Clive Warren and yeah. Rebecca Morning. I said, it's one of them where it starts off and the people, you know, you, you're seeing into their lives from, yeah. like, the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. Um, you know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? They're planning a big do that night and stuff. And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, she's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's dead, dead right? Yeah. Now, what happens is, she's devastated, Rebecca. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't- if I- if I- if I know Clive Warren- And I think you do. I think I do. Um, he's gonna say, no, hold on though, there's more, isn't there? I've- I've- Have you jumped the gun there, Rick? Go on, mate. What- well, carry, carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that, the titles come up. Oh, okay. It's got yeah. you, right? She's Starring devastated, she's- Clive She's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, Doctor says, Clive's dead. Um. And that, who's playing the Doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smythe. <laughs> no, the, the, the old, the old black fella. Um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, your husband's dead. Right. She's like, oh, God. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can, Take the brain out. Right. Right. 
and, and, and a fact that I'd read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily you I read a fact. thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. Yeah. You've actually got a full brain. Yeah. yeah. You can Some run it on half. half. You can yeah. run it on half. Right. Yeah. So, this is, this was in my mind still, so mm. I thought I'll get that in. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this, you can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He said, I'll tell you. He says, we can, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you Oh, he's, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but Wait, he is. he comes alive. What he is, <laughs> he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. No, so, no, no. he's gone. No, no, yeah. by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, no, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma, they're dead, aren't they? But no, the brain's no, no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in dead. a coma. No, they come out of a coma, he's Alright, then he's in a coma, he's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not gonna come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. Right, okay. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on though. I- I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely gonna die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how- how I've signed that donor card, yeah. Right, if anything happens to me- No, no, no. no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a program on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. Right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive, and it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes, and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, "Well, we're going to try and do a brain sort of Carl." Right. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be quick because I've got to get back. Uh, my cousin's fixing my boiler. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do with laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> then what happens is they say, "Do you want half of his brain in your head?" Half she, of his brain she in said, her head. "She says definitely not. I'm having you struck off." She starts screaming. She calls the police. He gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. He's right. like, look, you know what? What we're going to do here? We can either turn the switch off, yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but, you? So, why? so what he does? So what they do then? They're going to take half his brain, half of his brain, take out half of hers. Pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. But hold on, well, no, no, wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, okay, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so I mean this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing I, you, I, I rushing switched off, now. but yeah. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, this, this bit would have you. Mm. So what- Well, what I'd have actually left when I, I wouldn't have even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is, <laughs> She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And, uh, he goes, well, what will happen is, he's gone, but you'll- you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes, is better the brain will sort of say- Have a wheat a bit. Have shredded wheat yeah. or whatever. And she's like, oh yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought- What do you mean yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh wait a minute, this is only act that's, one. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so has it done. So what is- what- who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone. Yeah. But- but now with and again- With- with- with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So- so the idea is it's all going well at the beginning and she's- So she can't decide what so, so to wear- So she's got- he, he so she's had half it. of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. okay? And- and Clive Warren's, uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round, okay. So yeah. she's like a- she's schizophrenic. Or- oh no, no, well, it's okay- no, it's okay though, cause the bit they put in of Clive Warren's brain is actually- it remembers doing a coma. 
So there's nothing happening anyway, don't worry about it. So all she's got is half a brain. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's- she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, right, in his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that that she has to get used to. And does he- does Clive's brain know that he's now inside her brain? Um, does that matter? (laughs) Well, I would say it matters, because- Otherwise, yes, it, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the point of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. and Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me, sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I've just thought about, or whatever." I'd still be there. But, but she wouldn't ever do that. It? The rest of the, the the rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But Carl, like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If when- when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? They're still there physically. Yeah. But you go- you can't have a chat with them. So, if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've else? got a perfectly good brain. Yeah. So, but- but, like I said, you're running on half. So have- Who's have running on half? So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I could also it? categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you love and that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And you I'd go, no! It's madness! I don't think you- It's but wait. madness! Alright, 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 let me just ask this as a question, even if we accept this as a possibility. Does- if- if Clive Warren doesn't know <laughs> that he's in Rebecca's brain, their love and the conversations they used to have and what would- the connection between them is gonna be absent because she's gonna be talking to him and he's just gonna be going, I don't know, shredded we- It's all thought. She doesn't have to so talk. So they're not talking to one another. Well, they are, but not out loud. She's not walking down the corridor going, what do you think, Clive? And, right. And he's saying shredded wheat. It's just, it's happening. Right. But so, how is this dramatically so shown on screen? Do we hear those So voices? now they've yeah, got- you hear the voices. You hear the voices? You hear the voices. So, tell, so me anyway. a bit, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, let's do- can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral, cause even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like and she can start laughing and the family are looking at her going, why is she laughing? Yeah. And she's sort of laughing and he's saying something a bit rude going, look at her head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Looks like Stuff a on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> Little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that and people are sort of liking the film thinking, oh, it's quite funny this. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> the eight people that have gone to see him. <laughs> yeah. We're making them all in her family. <laughs> yeah. Clive Warren's three mates. All right, Clive, I didn't know you were a film star. <laughs> no, no, I was working in a garage yesterday. Yeah, I was fixing boilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this is where you get them. It's the most- oh, it is the most ludicrous idea for film I've ever heard! All right, it's, all right, the, but- it's the maddest! It's the- honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right, it- I have to say though, I am hooked now. Mm-hmm. I want to know what's gonna happen next in the story. Oh, Christ. Remember, I was making all this up. <laughs> it's not based on a true story then. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, imagine if he said that in a meeting. Remember, I'm making all this up and they go, all yeah. oh, right. Oh, okay. Oh. I thought, I thought, oh. oh. So the meeting's still going on. They haven't left at this point. No, no, they, they were sort of going, all oh, right, yeah. But what annoying- Check right. please. Check the, please. That's the annoying thing. It was like, I just wondered whether this is what they do just so they can have a cake every day at four o'clock because <laughs> it was odd. I can't imagine Spielberg sort of nipping down to Costa Coffee to <laughs> discuss E.T. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I said, so oh I said, God. right, so this is where you get them, you've got everyone laughing and that's mm. what it's all about with a film, innit? It's emotions, yeah. messing with people's emotions and that. Yeah, yeah. So they like that, they were like, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. That's and there you go again, that's oh, me. Oh, new outlook to filmmaking. That's mm-hmm. me, that's me mouth coming out with stuff that even I didn't know I knew. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so then I said, um, I said, right, then what happens is, <laughs> She hears the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. He, she, so he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip. I've in. let something slip. So she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Yeah. So. He's, so, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know- Where are your backs? 
So he's got hunt down Leslie. So he's got she's got hunt down mm. Leslie. Right. And um, that that can fill about half an hour again. I'm not I love the sure. fact that you're doing it. Al Five you've got through the film. <laughs> yeah, you've I'm got like, yeah. fill up tw two hours, right? So right? One more idea. We call it half hour. That's the end <laughs> of the film. See you later, <laughs> starring Clive Warren. So so nice to see Rebecca De Mornay again, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Leslie, uh, so Leslie has got to be sought out. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it another a woman? Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone. What would sort of happen is? <laughs> oh yeah, because we don't want to ruin it for them. Because this will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah, time. Yeah, this film's oh, definitely going to oh, be made. This is definitely going to get made. Well, yeah. seriously, uh, isn't any f pick pick a massive Hollywood film and look at it on paper and go, that's a balmy idea. Casablanca. I haven't seen it. Okay. So what I'm saying is. What That's why they called on him as a movie yeah. expert. This is this is a different sort of love triangle. They've all got their own brains yeah. and legs and stuff walking around interacting normally. But, but that's just it. It's 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 the power of love, isn't it? In a way. Yeah. But sorry, I, I mean I don't want to see. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in the head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening. On, come on, what's the end? Waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was, I said maybe because I wasn't sure about this end bit. I thought they, they might think it's daft or whatever. You're putting so yourself said, down. I, I imagine it's. Dynamite gone. I said maybe you could have something like this, and uh, they were there, sort of going, "Oh yeah, what, what's it going to be?" Transfixed. What's it gonna be? Yeah, well, he's come up with some great stuff at the moment. What happens is, his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right? How it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't. Why is there no power involved? It's got a stronger will. What I mean is, the brain, mm. her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's his taking brain, over. His brain's just sat there, isn't it, thinking stuff. Right. Brilliant. So that's- that gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian Hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love- so what the- well, It's what? trendy, isn't it, that? So just have a bit of that at the end and- That- that is the worst idea I have ever heard for any piece of art. I mean, it's the wor- it would be the worst- it would be the worst TV show, worst book, wor worst everything. It's the worst idea. It's not the worst idea because as long as a film, as long as a film makes you think, but this doesn't make job. us think about anything. I'm thinking, who the fuck's Clive Warren? <laughs> so hold on. So he overpowers her, so she is now a lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think? Hold on. Why is why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. He's R relationships, it's the love of two brains. Right, okay, again, can that's anyone out there, line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two <laughs> brains. Well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But is she, does she know this is Clive Warren? Um. well, maybe, maybe now and again, Rebecca, or Clive says something. Rebecca will say something now and again, like, "Oh, I like me minge. <laughs> <laughs> I like me, you know, me food done like this or whatever." And and it's all about say say if like I'm a food cook. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, Clive Warren on this <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People shredded wheat. People like what they like, and it's Ooh. the same way. Like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman, and then is found out that she's got a twin sister, and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that when a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing. You want that same. Yeah, but love you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Yeah, well, I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs. Now I like cock. <laughs> well, this is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It Rick, you may be interested to know mm. that Carl Pilkington, basically thanks to the efforts of your good self mm. in making him into a household name, mm. has got a book deal. And there's a book that will be coming out later in the year called Happy Slapped by a Jellyfish mm. by Carl Pilkington. What's that about, Carl? What's the, uh, what's the angle? Is it a novel? Well, again, I just was letting my mouth sort of think and what have you, just churning stuff out and I was thinking about holidays that I've been on. Because they always say write about what you know and stuff. Mm. So I thought, well, I've been on a few holidays. Mm. Um, 
write about them. I actually thought about it when I was on holiday. Is it a real- is it like a- a travel book then? It's your experiences? It's just like, uh, like a rough guide. And have you- have you done it? Have you done it? Have you finished the- the- Yeah, I've just got to do some pictures and that and colour them in. And then it's done. When's that out? October? Yeah. So you say it's a travel book, um, and yet I- I managed to get hold of a few pages, um, yeah. and this chapter is titled Australia. So- You've never I mean, been to Australia? No, I know. But, well, it's but not how's yet travel going. No, it's not. It's not like wish you were here type thing. It's it's just saying, if you're going away, think about it. Right. It's just asking people to sort of think. But why about don't they just let their mouth do the thinking? Why no, they? but just just have a read of of like my thoughts and you. Okay, have the same so you don't then. you don't know anything about Australia because you've never been. No, but but exactly. So I'm saying I've never been. This is why I've never been. Is this why you've never been? Well, I don't, that makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. It's a pointless book. It's not a pointless book. Well, let me, let's sorry, okay. wh whereas you thought it was going to be what? <laughs> <laughs> right, can we read a bit of it then? <clears throat> <clears throat> so this is the chapter entitled Australia. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. <laughs> Carl, well, you are it? a maniac! It's You're just thinking about it. Thinking about where spiders go and that. And that works, doesn't it? No! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, right, okay, read on. I've heard that a lot of people go camping in Australia, which I think's mental. If I was to fly all that way, I'd want a decent bed. Mm. Plus, I wouldn't be camping in a place where there are killer spiders wandering around. I agree. I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was- it was all a bit of a nightmare, cos I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, who had a bit of land in the garden. What's the point, though, in it? You know, you're camp. What's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of like a spa down the road and like a pub? no? Because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have Getting for like when they have all, parties yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land- Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a quite a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. What, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of keeping on the beach. But, yeah. uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found a bit of- see, we, we found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought- nice. That's the place to go, no, yeah. No, a municipal that, tip. What was it? Was it- was it chemical waste or just like, you know- No, just um, coke just syringes stuff. and oh, uh, lovely. But, but listen, though, you've got to think about that. Rusty, if there's, wasn't it rusty? If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like- it's a way- that's like a little tip of- I would love this to be a real so, guide. So you um, could have slept in a thing, public lavatory. Yeah, yeah. This one's nice. What? It's covered in shit. <laughs> Means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed <laughs> up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's- that's where we put down the tent. We, uh, put down the tent there. And then Some what was annoying is- he puts down the tent. <laughs> we, uh, we- what's her name? We, uh, It was already up. He it carried was already it all up. the they way carried it all the way there. They went, let's pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was- as soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's all the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holidaymakers, they, uh, that, that was probably in the guidebook. They started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near- look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah. Near, near the nappies. And, um, they offered us some sausages. Oh, right. My mates would all ignore them. That's like code for, uh, swingers. What? Oh! What, so there were some people cooking some sausages, <laughs> yeah. saying, would you like the sausages, we've made too much, and you it's said, no, that's thing. code don't for swinging. don't talk to strangers. It's like, we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone 
you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And then so, uh, so, you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about forty-five. Who were they? That a man and a woman. A man and a woman. So, what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? No, I mean, you, you say, right, I want the bold one, love. <laughs> uh, if it's like wife swapping, should, <laughs> should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't, I don't know all the rules and that, but, uh... He's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of I said, don't believe sausages is a is code, a code for, for swingers. <laughs> I don't, uh, cos eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, well, get your pants off, and they go, wait a minute, we just have some sausages, they go, oh, this isn't working, this code. But why would they be, code. why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't, let's not trust these people, let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. I think I'd quite like to meet some proper Aborigines. It amazes me the way that these people still live like cavemen did years ago. They waste nothing. They have a use for everything. I saw some pictures in the paper about some tribe somewhere who chucked their spears at a helicopter that tried to land close to them. If the tribe got annoyed with you, they would let you know that they were annoyed by shaking their knob at you. That's what they do. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God. See, that's, that's like a proper guide thing. Just in case you ever meet one, they start doing that. Carl just ends that chapter by saying, I don't know what the women do if they get annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! Within this new Carl book, of course, there are extracts from his famous diary. Uh, this is... You've actually been to Madeira, have you? Yeah. Okay, so this is a bit more of a factual, factually accurate, informative chapter mm. on Madeira. September 30th. Going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> oh God! <sighs> We had to get two cabs to the villa, because they couldn't fit five of us into one. It cost 85 euros each. <laughs> That's just whinging. That's not anything. That's day, though, isn't it? It's a day away. But it's not done because they don't know how far that yeah. was. They don't know whether that's rip-off or how, you know. It's just letting you know that. What? You don't know what the distance was. If it was, if it was a mile, a it's a rip-off. If it was 25 miles, it's a bargain. And you know you can't get five of you in one cab. It's all little, little things that might help you on a journey. Yeah. Suzanne's dad said he liked the free biscuits that were in the cupboard. We went to try and find- Sorry, this isn't useful as a guidebook at all. That is absolutely a I know. They go, well, as a guidebook, let's have a look. Oh, Suzanne's dad liked the free biscuits in the cupboard. And most people complain, you know, and they're going to be like, there's no free biscuits in this cupboard. We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because it- because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? He d to drown out the sound of vacuum cleaners, or he puts a vacuum cleaner in no, his room if, to if drown out the sound of mopeds? No, if you've just got a noise, um, that's constant, it makes you nod off. And it drowns out every other background noise, so all you've got is like, if it's a vac, it's just and if that's constant for like all night, mm. you just not People off. next door going, they've got their vacuum cleaner on again, put on the JCB. <laughs> People next door going, they've got the <laughs> JCB on, get the- but uh, poke, poke the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that's how nuclear wars start. <laughs> yeah. It works. Doesn't work. We Ear watch- Earplugs. Earplugs. Drown out everything. I tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> You're such a strange little creature. Oh. We watched Jerry Maguire in Spanish. Suzanne wanted to go to bed, but I just said I wanted to hear the show me the money line in Spanish to see if it's as catchy. It wasn't. October 3rd. Sorry, sorry, it's Portuguese or Spanish? I don't know what, where they, what they're speaking in this country. Madeira. So Spanish. it's Spanish and Portuguese, is it? That's Portuguese, isn't it? Uh, I think there's a mix. I think you get people going it's Portuguese, on holiday. I think. Yeah, but you get Spanish people going there. Oh, so. okay. So they sometimes show television programmes for ho for possible Spanish holiday makers. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Or have you just got this factually inaccurate because it's a load of old toss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Amazing. 
<sighs> October 3rd. Didn't do much this morning. Just think about this. <laughs> Just think about this. Why would you put it in as a, as a holiday? <laughs> Just think about this next line. Judith Chalmers. What happened? Not a lot. Mm. Think about this, Rick, as a description of a holiday. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, you, okay. As Carl said, he loves to go travelling. It broadens the mind and yeah. everything. This is what he did. This is, he's there with his family. He's in Madeira. <laughs> Didn't do much this morning. Just sat by the pool saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> Like fucking Noah. That's right. You see nothing. How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or you grab oh, them in the air? Did you see the legs going. <laughs> oh God! Stuck my finger on the top. They grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what? When it, like a, some sort of insect lifeguard, you'd see some at land, and they'd go, "Right, that's me." Da 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 da, and you'd go in there. But it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that because you know that's something you know you're witnessing death. And if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think, have they learnt the lesson, or will they be back, and will they be dead in here tomorrow? But if they can get an extra day, I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday, do your bit. I'm lucky <laughs> enough to see the world, do your bit. <laughs> I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving flies and things. Is there something, there's something so sort of... Beetle, <laughs> an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was saving a beetle. <laughs> there's something so kind of, I don't know, desperately existential about your diary. That's what's <laughs> yeah, so extraordinary about yeah. it. As he says, I just sat by the pool saving insects that flew into it. It was full of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so, oh, God. it's so depressing, isn't oh. it? Right. We walked round the shops. Suzanne's dad bought two packets of the biscuits he'd like to take back home with him. Suzanne's man bought a tin of corned beef. <laughs> It was a bit of a boring day today. Jesus. There was a dead bird out the back. Oh, oh. no. Where were you, Carl? Suzanne's dad said it looked like it had flown into a wall and killed itself. No, I think it caught a few insects, but it, they were covered in chlorine, so it poisoned it. Loads of ants were eating it. Oh, God. I dug a hole under a tree and buried it. The ants were still all hanging around the scene of the death, ages after the burial. Suzanne's dad said I should have left the bird for the ants to eat because I was messing up the food chain. I felt bad, so I gave the ants some breadcrumbs. This is weird. This is just so dark. This is dark. really weird. It's good bread out there, though, isn't it? I should have put that. We have to eat all the food we've got because we're going home tomorrow. Suzanne's ma'am cut her finger opening the corned beef tin and fainted. <laughs> Sorry! This is really weird. Why do you have to eat all the food? Isn't this like, what was it, <laughs> what's that film, the, uh, Amateurville Horror, where there's like a haunted house and there's dead insects and ghostly <laughs> children walking through the corridors. <laughs> Old people fainting, oh, insects. I'm just saving the insects, mother. But you always eat all the food that's that's in the fridge before you go home, don't you? It's all there to be eaten. She bought some pikelets, which I've not, never had them. They like squash crumpets. <laughs> right, okay. Start again. Start the whole thing again. She bought some what? Some pikelets. Pikelets? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't like them because they're not as fat as crumpets. <laughs> I it's like a different Didn't language. Eat them, and it was a big upheaval because, like, I was going home and, and her dad kept trying to sneak them into our bags. Because <coughs> he's like, they were for you, you take Smuggling. them, we don't want your stuff in, in our house. Once, because he gets a bit funny about stuff being left over. There's bins that you can't put certain stuff in. There's a bin in the lounge and I put a tangerine peel in it. He goes, that, that sort of stuff does not go in that bin. <laughs> <laughs> so it's rubbish, yeah, but it's not the right sort of rubbish. Oh, what, but, Someone will camp next to it. <laughs> We want to get a, a better class of camper. <laughs> oh. That's the book. Uh, it's called Happy Slap by a Jellyfish. Yeah, that's from one of the chapters, isn't it? By Carl Pilkington. Get that soon. Particularly if you're thinking of visiting, uh, Madeira or Australia. Well, that's about it. Um, thanks for listening, um, to this. If you enjoyed this and you haven't heard the, the others, there's a, we've got the whole, um, all three series on iTunes. You can go and download those. Uh. The Ricky Gervais Show, is that what it's called? It's called The Ricky Gervais Show. Yeah. Um, Carl's also made a programme for me, Steve, um, on my, um, Fame DVD, out in November. Um, it's called Fame, so I thought we looked like, oh, Fame, I'm gonna live forever. Remember that guy we met who's gonna live forever? Oh, yeah. Called Howard? Yeah. That was a meeting of mine's, and it's, um, it's, it's Carl meeting Howard, and it's, uh, it's- on with him. It's really good, isn't it? It's really good, and, um, they do, he, he really gets on with him. And then uh, we're probably gonna do a new series of the podcast maybe next year. What do you think, Carl? If you're not too busy making this film with Clive Warren? 
We'll see how it goes. Don't, Go, don't plan anything. Yeah, just ch check out um, rickygervais.com. I am Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl. All right.